Well, hello, fellow colleagues. My name is Mrs. Kolai, and I'm a regular education teacher. Currently, I teach second and third grade at an elementary school in Utah. I've taught about 15 years, and so I've had many years experience in teaching a variety of children with a diversified need. And one of the things that I'm really excited that I wanted to share with you today is a philosophy or a mindset called an attitude of gratitude. And I don't know if you've ever heard other people talk about this or you've read a book on it, but it is very powerful. And I thought what I would do is I thought I would take what I've learned personally. And first, it's always important to start with yourself and try something out on yourself to see if it works for you. And then after it worked so well for me, I thought, hey, it doesn't, it wouldn't hurt if I tried this out with my regular classroom of students. And so that's what I did. I proceeded to take this philosophy into my very own classroom with a, you know, a diversified amount of needs in there with behavior and academic needs. And so I thought I'd go for it and give it a shot. And I'm very pleased with my results. So what I thought I would do today is I would show share with you some of the the different lessons that I shared with my class and, and how to present it. So again, it's called the attitude of gratitude. And one of the first things I wanted to tell my students was that I was so thankful for them. And I said, it's because they make me laugh and they teach me new things and bring happiness into my life. And so that's where I wanted to begin. I wanted my students to know how thankful I, I was for them and how thankful that I was to come to school today and have the opportunity to, to learn from them and to be able to teach them so that they too might have bright futures. So you wanna start with modeling, what does it mean to be thankful and how do you have an attitude of gratitude? And so as a teacher, it starts with you, as you know, you're the one that models all of these important things, whether it's um, mathematics or language arts skills, and then they watch you I mean, you truly are a magnified version of whatever it is that you're teaching. So start first, if you're going to try to incorporate this into your classroom by starting with your students and just telling them how thankful that you are for them. And then also I like to talk about having good values. And so as we created our gratitude journal and we, we talked about what we would write in our gratitude journal, I told them they would start by first writing down three things that they were thankful for each day. And then I asked them to draw a picture of the thing that they are most thankful for. And then underneath that, I thought that it would be nice to do some goal setting. And so I, I told them what a value was, and it's a belief system about ourself and how important it is to set short-term goals. Even if it's a goal that could be reached during a day, it's a good thing for kids to practice. And so they can extend the time of, you know, how long does it take to reach a goal? And as an adult, then they can start to see the success that comes from setting long-term goals. And so a value could be a lot of things to a lot of kids. And so I talk, we have class values and I have a chart that has that on it, but these would be the individual values that a child in elementary school or junior high or high school could work on. And it's called the ABCs of good character. And that just represents values that make up their character. And you can see a long list here. Some of the things that I, I would want to share with my students would be that I would want them to be brave and, and face their challenges and being patient is an important value for young children, having to wait for what they want and being responsible. That makes them a great citizen in a school setting uh, wow. that they do what is asked of them with their very best abilities, not just slopping through it. And then one of the thing that, the, one of the big things that I'm focusing on is to teach my students how to be thankful and to be grateful for the small and simple things that they see every day in their life that sometimes we just forget that they're around us. And so it's it's truly a different way of thinking, changing our mindset, and it just makes us really happy, fulfilled people, both as adults and as children. So you would want to go over what a value is. And then a nice thing to talk about would be as we incorporate this gratitude of, you know, an attitude of gratitude and just having gratitude in our hearts for those things around us and setting a goal for ourselves. 
um, which was back here. And one of the things that I talk about is as they choose whatever value it is that they want to work on for the week, I, I have them write it down. I am, it's not going to be future tense. I will be, it's present. I am. So you're manifesting what it is that you want to be. So for instance, if, if I was a, a student, I would say I am patient because I can wait while my mom has to help my other brother and sisters or whatever it is, you know, that the child needs to work on at home or at school. So those, those answers could be based solely at school. If, if you were doing this as a classroom lesson at school, or uh, if I share this with my students, they can go home and set uh, values and goals for themselves at home too. So the next thing that I would want to do with my students or what I've done with my students is talk to them about what are bucket fillers. Each of us do have these invisible buckets that we carry around with us. And the idea is keep our buckets full and to go around and share with other people too, happiness. And then it fills other people people's buckets. And so it's, you know, a mindset of generosity, kindness and sharing and there's an, you know, when you do that kind of stuff, your bucket doesn't go dry. It just is overflowing. And so how do we become bucket fillers? I would I'll let my students know these simple ways. I give smiles. I am helpful. I am loving. I say nice things about others. I tell people, thank you. I write thank you cards to let people know how thankful I am for them in my life. Those are just simple ways to become bucket fillers. The next thing I would want to reinforce with them is as they're writing in their gratitude journal, I would want them to be very specific and say, "Be a, I am a bucket filler or um, be a bucket filler, be kind, whatever they want to do um, to remind themselves that that's what, what their goal is for the day to be kind. I will, I am kind. And so what it would look like in their gratitude journal would be these two things I would say, or I would have them say, I am thankful for, I am thankful for my family because they make me happy. They love me and take care of me. Okay, the next thing would be, they would write two more sentences. I am thankful for my house because it keeps me safe and it gives me shelter. Another thing that they might say would be, I am thankful for my pets because they are my best friend and they always give me love. Next, what you would want to have them write in their journal would be what their value is. So they would say, my value for today is that I am a bucket filler. And then they would say how they're gonna be a bucket filler. I am kind and loving. And the next step after they, they verbalize what it is or they write down what it is, I want them to tell it to a friend next to them what they want to do. And then I, after that, I want them to close their eyes and I would have them picture themselves being a bucket filler. What would it look like if they were actually a bucket filler during the day? What kinds of things would they be doing? After that, I would have them um, give themselves a thunk, thumbs up or maybe a hug if they actually accomplish their goal for the day. This is exciting for kids. As I did this in my classroom, we use terms, terminology like I'm a positive patriot or I'm a superstar a student, those kind of terms to mean something to us, which is similar to what a bucket filler is. So, you know, it's it's something that is familiar to them. And I had students that wrote down that they wanted to be a positive patriot. And then the next day they came up and told me that they were able to accomplish that. And they told me what they did to accomplish it. So it's, it's just very exciting as a teacher, as I'm teaching my students the importance of goal setting and then actually seeing um, all of their work go into fruition and they get to achieve that goal. And, you know, just the empowerment that that provides students as, as they're able to reach something that, that they had envisioned. One of the other things that I would suggest is, as you're talking about how do you fill a bucket uh, today, there's this great website that you could have your students go to and do a read aloud. It's, it's cute. That way you don't have to buy the book unless you want to buy the book. It's a great book. I would recommend that you buy it for your students too. 
but it's a guide to daily happiness for kids and it's a read aloud. So what does it look like? This is what I actually drew when I was teaching this to my class. You can see I taught this lesson on March the 10th, so not too long ago. And we, we titled our journal An Attitude of Gratitude, and then we listed our three sentences. We drew a picture of the thing, whichever those three things we were thankful for, whichever one was the most important to us for the day. We drew a picture of it, and then we wrote down what our values were. And I suggested that they write down, I'm a superstar student, and they know what that means in my class, or I'm a positive patriot, because that's just not one value that they're working on. To be a positive patriot, it's focusing on four different values. The four being self-mastery, respect, compassion, and resilience. So actually, if one of my students wrote down, I am a positive patriot, they would be focusing on you know, at least one out of four of those different values. So anyways, I hope that this was very beneficial for you. I've, I've had so much success with this in such a short time. If you have any questions for me, or if you would like me to share some of my insights on, on my curriculum, it's a well-being curriculum that I'm developing uh, for my, my classroom. And I'm in the process of writing a book about some of the different tools that a teacher could use to increase his or her toolbox and really focus on the emotional well-being of our students, not just focusing on, uh, you know, the typical content areas being math, reading, and writing, science, and social studies. But in this day and age with the statistics showing that suicide is so high, even students at age five or five to 10 are committing suicide. And that's, that's worrisome for me as an educator. And so I just felt like that there's gotta be something out there that I could bring into my classroom on a daily basis to help these kids. And, and I really found something that I love. And because I love it so much, I wanted to share it with you too. So anyways, let me know if you enjoyed my little educational moment with you. And, and I hope to be able to share more in the future. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye.